And good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Tan, and today I will introduce my paper, Acoustic Overlay Dropping Through Wireless Vibrometric. And nowadays, the loudspeaker is widely used in the conference and the infotainment systems. And on the other hand, our, our living environment is surrounded by all kinds of wireless signals. So imagine if the wireless radios can pick out the sound from the loudspeakers and what will happen. For example, your neighbor may know what the TV program you are watching, but more seriously, your cell phone call may be even dropped by a nearby wireless sniffer. But how to conduct this kind of attack in practice? And to answer these questions, we propose two practical threat models, namely reflective and emissive. For the reflective attack, the, uh, the attacker will set up its own transceivers. The transmitter will send out the wireless signals to hit the loudspeaker. The attacker tries to recover the audio from the received signal from the loudspeaker. And in the emissive attack, the written device, like a smartphone, is communicating with a nearby access point. And then the attacker will try to recover the audio by sniffing the outgoing packet from the smartphone. But you may wonder how this kind of attack be possible in practice. Uh, the sound is the magnetic wave and the wireless signal is the electromagnetic wave, right? But indeed, they can be related through the so-called uh, acoustic radio transformation process, called ART. Intuitive, the vibration of the loudspeakers will disturb the wireless channel and alter the amplitude and phase of the wireless signals. So the wireless signal will contain the signatures of the audio from loudspeaker. But, uh, but what's the advantage of this kind of attack? Because there's so many approaches to capture the audio. Traditionally, uh, we will use the microphones, and directionally, the microphone is widely used in the spinning and the news gathering areas. And the laser-based microphone is also used in some special areas due to its high directionality and sensitivity. But both approach will have its own shortcomings. The laser base, the microphone will fail in the soundproof environment, and the laser-based microphone will require the unobstructed line of sight environment. And the advantage of this LRT-based microphone is that it can penetrate the soundproof materials and unblocked by the opticals. The key questions in the LRT is that how to recover the audio from the wireless signals. To, understa to understand that, we built a physical model. So in previous uh, introduction, we already note the audio can be recovered from the RSS and phase of the wireless signals. For the RSS-based ART, we model it follow the typical wireless communications. The function A will describe the path loss models. If we expand it using the Taylor theory, we can see there's audio signals components where the RSS is proportional to the displacement of loudspeaker vibrations. Besides that, there's DC components and higher order harmonic. And for the phase-based LRT, we model it follow the micro Doppler effect. So based on the physical model, we can decode the audio from the wireless signals. And we designed the decoding algorithm. It's very simple. In the first three steps, we just try to estimate the channel RSS and phase in the frequency domain by sending a known sequence. And then we assemble the audio signals and pass it through the band passband filter to remove the DC components and higher order harmonic. And one question may be, the vibration of the loudspeaker is so small, and how is it possible to recover it with a good quality? And our key observation is that the radio sampling at a much higher speed than the required audio. So the oversampled audio signals will contain those tiny vibrations with still, with still, still with good quality. And we verify this uh, design with a feasibility experiment. We set up the loudspeaker two meter away from the pair of transceivers. 
and the transmitter sent our continuous wave at 5 MHz using channel 14. We placed the piano sound through the loudspeakers. And the right figure shows its uh, spectrum signature uh, of the piano sound over time. So we can see a very clear piano sound at three different frequencies. And besides that, we also see the weak but still noticeable high order harmonic there. And this experiment verified our basic ART design. And we also do another experiment. We test the audio uh, quality and over the it's dropping distance. We can see the overall trend is decreasing. But we observe uh, some abnormal deviations at some locations. And we believe this is come from the diversity. So this result implies we can enhance the audio quality uh, by leveraging this kind of diversity. But to do so, we first need to figure out where it comes from. And from the analysis, we find it's come from the multipath effect. It's primarily because the wireless signal is broadcasting. It's no, there's not only loudspeaker reflections, there's also reflection from other objects nearby. But to understand how the multipath will affect the audio quality, we can model these two reflection components in the phaser domain. And so the audio quality is uh, determined by the ratios of these two uh, of these two uh, signal strands for these two reflective components. So a different multipath profile will give different audio quality. And as shown in these figures, the right case definitely will have a better audio quality than the left case. Uh, to enhance the audio quality, we propose two kinds of mechanisms. The first mechanism is to leverage the spatial diversity using multi antenna. Intuitively, different antenna will give different multipath profile, and appropriate a combination of them will enhance the reflections from the loudspeaker. But the key question is here how to find out the weight for different antenna, because there's no explicit channel training from the loudspeaker surface. And we address this problem through a blind beamforming algorithm that to find out the receiving weight. Another problem is how to find out the transmit uh, beamforming rate efficiently. It's because the naive approach, you want to search all possible rates, is going to take infinite delay, and that's very low efficient. And we can address through a row switching beamforming method. The idea is, uh, is that at the first step, we first find out the receiving weight through the blind beamforming algorithm. And then we switch the road of TX and RS and convert the received beamforming weight to the TX beamforming weight. And then finally, we run another blind beamforming algorithm through computations uh, for the new receivers. And for more detail about this road switching beamforming, you can look at our papers. And the second mechanism is to leverage the frequency diversity. And intuitively, if you're changing the wireless center frequency, if you will change the angle between the loudspeaker reflections and the background reflections. And as a result, you change the audio quality. And another reason is that changing the center frequency, you can avoid the interference from a nearby smartphones or other device. And we verify this analysis through another experiment. We measure the radio SNR and the audio SNR over different uh, channels. And from this result, we can see channel 6 and 14 will have similar radio SNR, but they have dramatically different audio SNR. And we believe this uh, difference coming from, from the frequency diversity. And this verified our analysis. So besides the reflective ART, we also have the emissive ART me mechanisms. And as discussed previously, uh, the ART mechanisms, uh, the smartphones will communicate with the nearby access point. And the attacker will try to recover the audio by sniffing the outgoing packet from the smartphone. So the audio decoding process will follow typical wireless decoding process. We first detect the packet and then estimate the RSS from the CSI, and then finally assembles the audio uh, signals. But 
the above seemingly valid uh, process will have two hidden problems. <coughs> the first one is the non-uniform packet arrivals. Uh, and the non-uniform audio sample will significantly degrade the audio uh, quality. But fortunately, this problem can be solved via the audio sample reinterpolation. Another problem is that the accuracy of the RSS estimate from the CSI is very noisy. It's because the long training field uh, contain only two over the symbols. But we can address this problem through the RSS amplification. Our idea is to use the payload of the each packet to estimate the RSS as well. And the payload contains hundreds more than symbols, and so it's going to be more robust and accurate. So the ART attack imposed a security threat to the, our daily life. And to combat with this kind of attack, we propose the corresponding countermeasure. And for the reflected ART, we derive the safety distance from our analytical model. And we assuming a typical uh, through wall environment and typical wireless hardware capabilities. And for higher pass loss, a 10, 10 meters of safety distance can prevent any information recovery from the event drop. Uh, audio. And besides the safety distance, other mechanical vibrations like the human movements and the rotating fan, it can act as the interference source to reduce the audio quality as well. And we will evaluate these kind of factors in our later experiment. And for the emissive ART, the victim have better control over the device. So we designed the transmission power randomization scheme as the countermeasures. As we know, the original Wi-Fi power is sent using the equal powers. So our idea is to randomize the power of each packet so that the attacker cannot effectively recover the audios from the ISS information. And we implement the above LT design on the WAP software radio platform. And we used eight antennas and two carrier synchronized warboards. And we implement the reflective ART decoders and a communication library, which we can decode the Wi Fi packet using software. And we also mo modify the warp FPGA to extend its tampering duration from 800 microseconds to more than 50 seconds. We test various bands or loudspeakers, and all of them are small in size. We conduct the experiment in two environments, the comfort room and the soundproof room. The loudspeaker is inside the room and the attacker is outside the room, and we vary their distance from one meter to five meter. So we first evaluate the beamforming performance in loudspeaker and non loudspeaker environment. We vary the loudspeaker's location uh, over 10 different locations, and on average, we start by 7 dB PSNR improvement. And we also evaluate the impact of human movement. We place the loudspeaker two meters away from the transceivers. And from the result, we can see the audio quality degrades significantly only when the human is walking close to the antenna, lava meters, or is blocking in between the antenna and the loudspeakers. For the other movements, like the, mi the minor Breathing or walking three meters far away from the antenna is going to have negligible impact. We also test the human perception accuracy. We randomly play this 10 different numbers through the loudspeakers and we let four testers to listen to the recovered audios. We also use a high quality microphone to record the sound at the same position. And from the result, we can see the tester almost cannot hear anything at five meters. But through the ART, they can recognize the world with more than 80% accuracy. And this experiment shows that indeed our design can penetrate the wall and the conventional soundproof material. We verify our emissive design using the Moto X smartphone as a written device. It communicates with a nearby access point by running the iPerf application and initiate a TCP transmission at 10 megapps. 
we conduct a similar experiment at the emissive case. Since the volume, sound volume of the smartphone is much lower than the computer loudspeakers, so even the uh, smartphone is one meter away from the uh, tester, they cannot hear anything. But with this ART approach, our tester can recognize the sound with more than 90% accuracy. And we also verify our uh, trans transmission power randomization scheme using the trace driven simulation. So we first collect the Wi Fi packet trace using the warp board, and then we enforce the po transmission power randomization on each of the collected packets. And here we randomize the power uh, following the normal distributions. So here we can see a 5% deviation, uh, random deviation of the power can only reduce the audio PSNR by more than two orders of magnitudes. And that's enough to fraud this kind of emissive ART attack. And the 5% of the of random <coughs> derivations is very small and it's not going to affect the normal uh, wireless five layer and mat layer protocol. To conclude my talk, we are the first to thoroughly investigate the vibrometric on wireless device and we propose two kind of attack model. With our individual model, it is still the key factor that enables the highly sensitive Wi-Fi metric. And we designed three kind of mechani mechanisms. The basic LRT, the enhanced reflective and emissive LRT. And we implement and conduct intensive experiments using the commercial of the cell smartphone and wireless access point and software defined radios. And our experiment results impose alarming security threat to the acoustic systems. And if you are interested in how the recovered audio sounds like, please watch our one minute video on the YouTube. Thank you for listening. And I'm glad to answer any questions.